Hey, what's going on everybody welcome back this video we are looking at the friday nba slate we have nine games today it is already friday but let's go ahead and get into it as always if you enjoyed the videos appreciate it for the like button subscribe if you haven't already uh looking back at yesterday we hit on FanDuel, missed on draft king made some changes once um cam johnson was announced starting uh so got up to like anthony edwards on DraftKings, and he did absolutely nothing so that definitely cost us but let's see what tonight brings looking forward to this glad nba is back and uh let's get started so Looking at the point guard picks today, you have Luka Doncic. He's $11,800 going against Utah. It's a very difficult matchup now that Utah got Rudy Gobert back. So it'll be tough to drive um, in the paint against Gobert, and they're on the road. It's a tough place to play. Luka's still been playing his best basketball heading into the All-Star break. He was definitely uh, probably fired up about not being named a starter. But you know, he's always a good player, but I don't know if I want to get to him today, at least right now. You have James Harden making his Sixers debut going up against Minnesota. It's uh, going to be fun to watch him play with Embiid, but I don't know if I want to play him in his first game. Embiid is going to, you know, both guys are going to take away from each other. Both price tags haven't really come down yet. Like Embiid is almost 12K. Harden is 11,000. So it'll be tough to get to them, at least today, until the prices come down a little bit. You have Murray against Washington. He's always a good play. He's touching almost $11,000 now, though. So you'll probably need like, a triple double or close to a triple double out of him to really hit value or he's just gonna have to have like five steals and blocks uh he's an okay play but he's not you know none of these three guys at the top i think you need to play same thing with lamella ball now that he's almost 10k like i'd rather get a devin booker they started him at point guard yesterday which allowed him to get 12 assists he had six steals which is definitely an outlier but in you know, previous games he had three and three so you know, at least a couple steals you can expect from him maybe a block mixed in as well but now, if he's starting again, which I assume because they did play well with him as a point guard starter. I mean, if he's starting a point guard, obviously he's going to start. But if he's starting a point guard and they start Cam Johnson, then I feel really good about Devin Booker being able to possibly get another double-double. But let's get a ton of usage. You know, campaign was supposed to be back, but he missed yesterday. I don't know if he's going to play today. Even if he does, wouldn't be surprised if he comes off the bench in his first couple of games. Maybe even going forward because Cam Johnson is a, uh, he's like really good whenever he's been insert it into the starting lineup uh you saw sga play with 34 minutes it wasn't in any sort of limit he played okay in terms of shooting the ball he was great but didn't have a great fantasy game only five assists two rebounds no defensive stats going up against the pacers it's a great matchup indiana plays no defense and it should be high scoring but uh you know i think there's some better plays as well he's not like the only guy in that 9k range and 8k range that look good Halliburton is 88. He's a fade now that Brogdon is probable and he's going to play. So Halliburton will have to play some off ball now. And even though Halliburton will still get, you know, I don't know how many minutes Brogdon will play because he played like three games since December. But it's still going to take away from Halliburton, who's almost 9,000. Uh, Westbrook is going to get more minutes without Anthony Davis, but still, you know, I just never feel confident playing him. I'd much rather get to LeBron James. You have $7,000 Cole Anthony. Looks okay, but I'd rather get down to like $6,000 Jalen Suggs. At least on DraftKings, he's taken a ton of shots recently. He's been better in terms of just fantasy-wise, scoring a respectable fantasy score. Recently, he does have some bigger games over the last month or so with assists, and he's been a decent rebounder for a guard. So at 6K, you can look to him as a value pick. Going further down, Holiday is a fade at 5000 His price tag has come up. Campaign, if he's in, Maybe you can look to him even if he's coming off the bench as a value pick, but I don't know if he'll play a ton in his first game back whenever that is. And that's kind of it. Not too much else to look at. At shooting guard, we have James Harden at 10-9. Still probably a fade for me. Just want to see how he plays with Embiid. I don't know if I want to force him in there. Um, we do have some other superstars like Devin Booker and definitely LeBron James who look better as your top-end payups. In the mid-range here, you have OG Ananobi, Buddy Heald, Gary Trent at 65. Trent's been playing great all season. Tough that the Blazers gave up on him. Uh, but overall, Trent's shooting the ball really well. He does give you great defensive presence as well. And Anobi was playing absolutely awful heading into the break. Definitely needed that break to kind of clear his head because he was missing a ton of shots and not really contributing in with rebounds or assists recently. Uh, the price tag is good enough. The matchup is excellent going up against Charlotte. Uh, he has done well against them in a couple of games this year, and it's not surprising. Charlotte plays super fast, and you can expect him to get some defensive stats here with uh, some steals, especially. But I don't mind Ananobi. I think he looks better than like Buddy Heald now that 
Brogdon is in and he won't see Heald and Halliburton have to play 40 minutes a night. And then the 5K range, you have Malik Monk, who I think looks like a very solid option. Just without Anthony Davis, you're going to have you're going to need somebody else to step up offensively and take more usage and shoot the ball and you know, score more points besides LeBron James. Don't know if Westbrook can do that. I think Monk was a much better shot. He does give you monster GPP upside as well. If he gets red hot shooting, he can put up, you know, he did have, almost have a 60 point game. And I would expect him to play heavy minutes today um, against the Clippers. And it is a, a pretty good matchup as your late night hammer tonight. Other picks would be in the 4K range. You can look to Taylor Horn Tucker, has been playing more minutes for the Lakers uh, off the bench. He got up to 30 last couple of games. It's an okay fantasy play today, probably like Monk for like 1,100 more. 3K range, not too much that looks that appealing, at least right now. Maybe we'll get some news throughout the day, but nobody that I'm going to go crazy over. Moving on to small forward, top end, LeBron James. He's only small forward eligible, but he's still going to be a great play today. We've seen LeBron go crazy without Davis in the past, and even with Westbrook there. Um, they they're seem content with not having Westbrook play a lot of minutes if he's not playing well, which tends to happen a lot more often than he is playing well. So you can see LeBron play like close to 40 minutes trying to carry the Lakers into the postseason because right now they're going to need some help to make the postseason. they got to keep winning games, at least, at least start winning games. They haven't really been winning games. Uh, but 10-6 for LeBron, good price tag, good matchup. Nobody else is even close to him at the price tag at small forward. Yeah, Jimmy Butler, he's had a good tag. Tougher matchup against the Knicks, but he looks good. Uh, definitely you can go with Bridges against uh, Toronto. He's you know, they're, they're playing a lot of guys. I mean, they're playing a, like eight guys a lot of minutes. At least like the Stars are playing a lot of minutes, and you can throw in a couple of bench guys like P.J. Washington. 6K range, yeah, Morris Sr. looks fine at 64. I like Ananobi a little bit at 62, just so people are not going to play him. Uh, Scotty Barnes also looks fine at 58. Uh, Toronto, another team that just plays their starters a lot of minutes, just like Charlotte. Yeah, 4000 for Eric Gordon as a value pick, definitely fine. And once again, don't have too much options in the 3K range unless we get some more news. Power forward, Kyle Kuzma, 89. He's priced up, but still, Porzingis is not playing, which is surprising because they said he was ready to Well, he said he was ready to play when the trade was made, and he's still out. Going further down in the 5K range, don't have much in the 5K range that I really like besides Scotty Barnes. The 4K range, same type of deal. Don't have much in the top end besides Cam Johnson, who I like a lot. Him and Crowder, the two starters for the Suns. Johnson just, he's always a good fantasy play whenever he's starting just because he gets more minutes. And uh, with Devin Booker play, taking over the point guard duties, you can look to Cam Johnson to get some open threes. Booker has... Showing great ability to be like a de facto point guard when he's been, or whenever Chris Paul has missed. At center, Embiid is somebody I'm not going to get to. Cat going up against Embiid, back to back for Minnesota. Tougher matchup for Cat going up against Embiid. I think you can go with the value pick here with like Christian Wood at 79. He's priced appropriately. Always risks that uh, these Rockets games gets turns into a blowout. But going up against Orlando, don't really have to worry about that too much. You have two bad teams. Two, two teams that don't really play any defense should be a good game for fantasy production. So $7,900 Christian Wood is on my radar. And then you have another cheapie with uh, Mo Bamba at 45. His minutes have sometimes been over all over the place recently, but going up against Houston, he's average. He played 31 minutes in the earlier game against them. Even if he gets to like 25 to 28, he can still be really productive at this sort of salary. So I'm going to go ahead and put him in. And then the last guy you can talk about is like Dwight Howard. If they decide to start him, which they could, but even without, even with Davis missing a large portion of the game against Utah, against a big Utah team, he only played 12 minutes. So sometimes they seem fine to go small. Clippers can also go small with Covington at the five and you know, not play Zubats and Hardenstein in a ton of minutes. But if Howard is starting, you can play him at utility or play him over Bamba. Um, that's definitely something that looks good. And then uh, the last piece, go ahead and put in here is another guy um, on Phoenix. It's Bridges. I think getting to a couple of Phoenix players against uh, the Pelicans at least looks good. Once again, I'll put him in at the forward spot just because guard does have some usually has some better options than forward. Bridges only played 31 minutes yesterday because 
they were up by 20 plus in the fourth quarter so you know he's normally playing high 30s in minutes in a close game the pelicans go, coming into phoenix back to back for the suns and the pelicans have played tougher recently when ever since they got tj mccollum but it has they haven't had a game yet where both mccollum and brendan ingram have been cooking it's basically just been mccollum hopefully ingram can get back to his production um since the all-star break is over but it leaves you with like 47 or $4,600 left for the last two spots. I'm sure we'll get some more news throughout the day, but as of now, loading up on the Lakers, a couple, a couple of Lakers, a couple of Suns, attacking this Houston game a little bit, Houston-Orlando, seems like a pretty good route to go. And uh, let's go over to FanDuel now. All right, over on FanDuel, your point guard picks, you have Luka at 11-2, looks, you know, he's cheaper than he is on DraftKings as usual, but still a tough matchup. You can rather get down to like Dejounte Murray, I think, at let 10K. If you think you can get a triple double or get close to, and get a bunch of steals or something like that against Washington. Do you have some other picks that are cheaper, like Lamella Ball at 88? Great price tag on Fred Van Fleet at only eight thousand dollars. His price has come way down. Great matchup against Charlotte in terms of being a high scoring game. Lowry's price tag is up. Westbrook's price tag is way down to 7K. So he makes some sense. Uh, then you have another guy like six sixty one hundred dollar Cole Anthony looks excellent. You can play him at shooting guard as well, so super easy to get to him. And not gonna play Aaron Holiday at five thousand. Jalen Green looks okay as a value, and that's basically the main pieces. Uh, I will go ahead and put in uh, Fred Van Fleet, Van Vliet at only eight thousand. That's definitely one of the cheapest price that he's been all year. At shooting guard, top end once again. Luca Harden is only 96, but still I'm not sure you want to get to any of these top guys. Uh, Halliburton is probably a, definitely the looks the weakest out of the top four. Uh, Devin Booker is still a great play. Put him in at 9,000. Um, and then there's another guy that would be $6,100 for Cole Anthony. Uh, going further down here, 5K range. You have Wagner at 56. He can have a good game every once in a while. Malik Monk at 49 also looks great. So you do have a number of options that you can pick from. Uh, shooting guard is definitely looking pretty solid. And then we'll see about Derrick Rose's status, if he is in or not. He did practice in full. Probably be on a minutes limit, but you, you never know with Tibbs. You might play him like 35 minutes. If he's starting, he would be an excellent play. If not, then you can probably avoid him in the first game, if he is playing at least, if he's coming off the bench. Small forward, LeBron James at 10-7 once again. Going to be my favorite stud to pay up for on this slate. Uh, him and Booker just... Trying to prioritize those guys. Uh, 6K range, you have Trent at 67. He's pretty expensive. I think you can go down to like Scotty Barnes at 58 or go all the way down to OG Ananobi at 54. You also have Bridges sandwiched in between those guys. So a lot of options here. And then even further down the 4K range, you do have Cam Johnson at 42. So I'll put Cam Johnson in at small forward and I'll put LeBron in at power forward. So LeBron at 10-7. Other guys would be like Christian Wood, great price tag at 78. You can go with Kuzma without Porzingis. I probably like Christian Wood more than Kuzma, though. And then you have OG Ananobi at 54, Bridges at 56. And that's the main pieces I'm kind of considering. Yeah, not too much else that looks that appealing. And then at center, Embiid is 11K, so probably not something I'm going to try to get to with Harden back or Harden making his debut. I like Christian Wood. If I put him in, you have like 5,000 left. Other guys would be looking at like Mo Bamba at 45. He also looks great if you needed a value pick. Uh, but it's, on FanDuel, you only get one center spot. You always draft, you can play one at utility. So it's a little bit more important to get a center that's at least not going to bust. So I feel more confident in Christian Wood at that price tag. Or you can go all the way down to like Dwight Howard if he's starting. But still don't know. Even if he's starting, you might only play like 15 to 20 minutes depending on if they decide to go small. But that's it for the video. Thank you for watching. Best of luck tonight. Stay tuned for Twitter for updates, and I'll see you all next time.